Hello and welcome to module four access control lists concepts. All right, so we're going to be toggling back and forth between the packet tracer and the notes you're going to be taking. So please don't forget to take in the notes that I asked you to and submit them when we're all done. All right, so start writing everything that you see on the screen. So what is an access list? An access list is a series of iOS commands that are used to filter packets based on the information found in the packet header. It is a list of statements that a router either permits or denies a packet from entering or leaving. Think of it this way. Think of it as a security guard that has a list with them, right? The, the guy is inside the router. The security guard has a list of which packets are permitted and which packets are denied. The security guard is either going to be looking at for the packet entering or leaving the router. So what I mean by that is, um, if you go to, let me just go show, the security guard is inside here, and let's say this is the, the inbound router. So when a packet comes in, the security guard has the access list, looks up, for example, the, the, the source IP address, and if it says deny him, it will not let him go through in. All right, if the security guard is out here and you come all the way out, he may not let you go out, depending on the list that he has. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create the list of what packets are permitted and what packets are denied. And then we are going to apply it to an interface, either on the in or on the out. When I mean in, coming into the router. Out means out of the router. Not out, not into a LAN. Is that clear? It's, it's always the security guard is inside and he is either going to let you leave the interface or or not coming into the interface so if you're applying it on the end that means packets coming into the router if you are applying it on the interface that's leaving the router that means leaving the interface okay that's what you, that's how you got to do this all right so what are the benefits of acls well there's the list of course it's like a firewall uh, it's what a firewall is, it's either permitting or denying packets from going somewhere. So it's going to provide you traffic flow, of course, security. It's going to permit or access, uh, permit or deny access to network services, and so on. There are two types of packet. Remember, you're typing all of this. Two types of packet filtering. There's a standard. The standard packet lists, uh, the standard access list is going to look only at the source IP address to decide if you are permitted or denied. An extended access list is going to inspect not only the source IP address, but it also looks at the destination IP address of the packet and what protocol, what, what port does it have. So on the, those, those three different items, it will be able to decide to either permit or deny the packet. And they have to match all three. You have to match the source, the destination, and the protocol. For example, if you want to deny somebody from network, 192.168.10, that's the source, going to host 172.16.100.3, that's the destination, and port 80, HTTP. So if you're going, if you're coming from this network, going to this host, on that host, you're trying to access HTTP, which is port 80, you're going to be denied, for example. All right. And inside the, inside um, the, um, the access list, we don't use of sub mask addresses, we use wildcard just like we did with OSPF. And just as a reminder, for example, here is a standard list. You say permit 192.168.64, that's the network address. And this is the wildcard, which is uh, dot, not, it should not be dot 63, it should be dot 63, not dot 64, right? So this means the first 63 users starting with address.65 will be permitted. That's what this really means, right? So uh, .63 is the wildcard for slash 26, right? How do you get this 0063? Is you take four 255s minus the decimal equivalent of slash 26, which is this, right? So as a reminder, 255 minus 255 is zero. 255 minus 255 is zero. 255 minus 255 is zero. And 255 minus 192 is 63, and that's your wildcard. All right? So again, what does this mean? 
That means all 63 users, starting with dot .64, will be permitted. Right? But remember, dot .64 is a network address, so that really doesn't count. So dot .65 and all the way up. That's what it really means. How does that work? Zeros saying you need to match all four, eight zeros. You need to match 192. So zeros means you have to match the bytes, right? And dot 63, only the first two bits have to be matched. And then the rest, it doesn't care. That's why you have uh, six bits. Two to the six bits is how many bits you can. Uh, it doesn't matter, right? So that's what that means. All right, so if you type in, by the way, 192.168.10.3 with quad zeros, that means you have to match every single bit, right? That means you are, in other words, you can write the word, you can write the command this, host 192.168.10.3 instead of writing 192.163 uh, with quad zeros. For a wild card, you can write, if it's all, if, if a wild card has all don't cares, you know, all ones, that means you can use the word any. Any means any network. All right. Here are some guidelines that you should always follow when you are creating ACLs. So just give me one second. All right, let's continue. Um, let's go back to the notes. So uh, guidelines for ACLs. Please take a snip. Well, in your book, you can take a snippet right out of here. Let me go back to the slides. And in the slides, there's a snippet, which is right here. I want you to take that, okay, and put it as part of your notes. Uh, so you don't have to copy everything right straight out. But looking at this, uh, make sure that you base the ACLs on the organizational um, policy, security policy. Don't make up your own or just ask anyone for that. Write out the ACLs that you're going to do, you know, Write out what you want them to do. You know, do, what do you want to block or um, or permit? Use a text editor. Uh, notepad. Type everything in Notepad because what happens is if you go straight to the router and start configuring it on the router, it will take effect immediately. If you defy, de deny certain packets and somebody's using it, they'll be denied immediately. So you probably want to write it in a text file because so you, you can make changes later on and uh, test it out before you go live, right? Document the ACLs with Remark. Remark is like a description of every command that you do. It's best to do that so this way when you are reading the access list later on, you'll be, you'll be able to know what each of those statements is meant to do, right? And test the ACL. Again, test it before you go to production. All right, here are some examples of the standard ACL. So standard ACLs always uses the numbers 1 to 99. So what you're doing when you type access dash list, this is the command at the config mode, and then you write the number 10. So it means you have a paper with number 10 on it, access list number 10. And the first statement is going to say permit network 192.168.10.128 and with a wildcard 000.127, right? This is like you're trying to permit network 192.168.10.128 dot 128 slash 25, right? An extended list, for example, will use the numbers from 100 to 199. So when you say access dash list 100 and you want to permit, uh, and you got to use the word here, TCP, layer four protocol. You got to write that in. So this word, this number could be 100 to 199 or 2000 to 2600. Here, instead of TCP, you can use the word UDP, depending on the protocol that you're trying to block. In this case, TC80, port 80, which is HTTP, is a TCP protocol, right? So you write TCP. If you try to do six port 68, which is a UDP port, then you write the word UDP here. Or you can write ICM, which doesn't use any ports. So here, you either write TCP, UDP, or ICM, ICMP, depending on which port you're trying to block. All right. So then you type in the source address. Where is it coming from? This is a subnet slash 24. That is a wildcard 000 255. And, and the destination is a specific host in this case. Right? That's the destination. 
Post 172.16.100.3. And then equal EQ 80. You can write either the port number or you can type HTTP instead of 80, the keyword. All right, so this is a typical so uh, source IP, destination IP, and the port in, any, in the extended ACL. Now, instead of using numbers, we can use named ACLs. Makes it much easier. So to do that, you write the word IP access list. You don't just type access dash list. You have to write the word IP first. IP access list. And then you have to say either standard or extended. If you write the word extended, then you got to follow the rules in all the statements underneath according to extended, which means you have to write the source IP destination and the port number and the protocol in this case, like this TCP. So, or you can write standard. If you write, write IP access list standard before you write the name, then you got to follow the rule as just the source IP, just like the top. All right, so in this example, we wrote IP access list extended, and we're going to call it, give it the name HTTP. And typically, you want to write the name in capital letters. All right? And then you say, okay, permit this network, host this network, blah, blah, and this. And then you hit enter, you can type in another command and another command and so on, right? Without having to fight. Then you start with the word, you know, oh, again, you got, I forgot the word ECP, for example, right? And you could type in more. Uh, place, if it's a standard list, because it's according to the source IP, where do you place them? Well, you look right here. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, they'll show us. Let me just, okay, here. Let me just go right here. If it's a standard list, you want to go very close to the destination right here on the output because it's you, you're doing it according to the source IP. Because if you put it close to the source, what's going to happen when you transmit, you look at the source IP address and it's this and you block them if it's denied. And he won't be able to go anywhere else. Not good. So what you're going to do, if it's a standard list because you're inspecting only the source IP, you put close to the destination. If it's a, an extended list, then you put it close to the source because I know where you're from and where you're going and what you're trying to reach. Exactly. And you can either block them or permit them from leaving. So if you block him with an extended list, he doesn't, you know, you know exactly where he's supposed to be going, and then you can block him at the source. Uh, so he doesn't have to consume bandwidth in, uh, to go to the other side. Uh, so remember this, if you're creating a standard list, you place it close to the destination. If it's an extended list, you place it close to the source. So the first thing that you are going to do when you are asked to create an access list is you have to decide, am I going to use a standard or an extended? If they are only if asking you to uh, look at the source IP address and nothing else, then you go close to the destination or where you are trying to permit or deny. If you are asked to, do, to inspect the source, the destination, and the protocol, then you go to the source as close as you can, and that's where you are applying it. All right, um, that's it for this chapter. Believe it or not, take all the notes that I asked you, everything that you see here. And when you're all done, just save it and submit it. And I'll see you on the next module.